All right, what is the background of truth or consequences? Historically, they changed their name from Hot Springs in the 1950s to Truth or Consequences because they liked a radio show. There is a sign I recorded from my other channel. It'll come up in a few weeks. And you can read uh, that history. It's like a paragraph. There's a museum that cost six bucks. Uh, I, I just wasn't willing to pay for that. I'm sure they explain a little bit more detail on the change on what happens and all of that because on the sign what it sounds like is the radio show came to town and and did a show and and uh like a ceremony for the official change of the name uh the show is has uh episodes on on from the radio and the tv on the youtubes so there's there's uh searchable content and it looks interesting I watched a little baby race. It was uh, kind of interesting with Bob Barker. I think it was one of the shows that Bob Barker first <clears throat> hosted. <clears throat> but truth or consequences, I mean, it sounds like they're grounded on drama. It's, I mean, why else would they, the leaders have decided that is a good idea to change their name from Hot Springs. Hot Springs. And I, I looked around over the three days for hot springs and I didn't see any historically again well before the t the radio show came out there were the Apache Wars and and I also recorded a, a sign there's a lot of cities will have signs uh, historical points uh, telling you uh, what happened in this area and it's really nice that's that's a free service that they a lot of the a lot of the historical societies will do, especially when it's something very interesting, and and will draw tourists. They'll they'll want to put out these signs uh, to lead people around to get people exploring the city a little bit more by putting signs in various places. But they had the Apache Wars, and they talked about. I recorded it, but the the there's a uh, like general or a, a higher ranked military uh, guy who uh, had his who was out bathing and I don't know it sounds like it could have been the uh, the mammoth the mammoth Butte area the mammoth Butte Lake but I'm, I'm not sure exactly he could have been in some hot springs but he was he was attacked by Apaches and his wife and 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 uh, sounds like slave girl, not quite. Just just a, a girl who who uh, who just did did uh, minor tasks for the the family. I don't think it was a slave, um, but they were they were captured in this raid while this while this general he he. There's two different accounts. He was either shot by arrows. And swam away, or, or the Indians thought that the Apaches thought that they killed him outright and left him to to die, but he survived. And then they tried to chase down the Apaches, and the Apaches, as the uh, the Americans were gaining, the American soldiers were. This guy had to like go ten miles to the nearest fort, uh, injured. He had to travel ten miles, and then he alerted soldiers from there and gathered up a, a party to, to track down the Apaches and got uh, the Apaches felt the pressure and killed both the women and and uh, I, I can't remember if they escaped or not but uh, you know the, the accounts weren't uh, recorded very accurately in the late 1800s but that was when it was I don't even know if it was called Hot Springs back then. It might have been a military called a military base of of some name. I, I'm pretty sure I recorded it. And then later called Hot Springs and then later Hot Springs changed to Truth or Consequences. And it's is I mean, when I was coming up to the city it was, it was a very peculiar name, very curious. So I definitely wanted to check it out a little bit more. And what I discovered is there's there's a lot of um this, the 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 number of transients is pick, has picked up in this in this uh, around this truth or consequence area. It seems between El Paso on the very border south, 
on, in Texas, the corner of Texas, and then up to possibly Albuquerque up north, there, there seem to be transients uh, on bicycles, walking, traveling, kind of like me, uh, up and down. It's not on the level, not nearly on the level of the California coast, uh, Oregon coast, uh, Washington coast, along the Pacific coast. All right, it's not nearly on that level, but it's it's definitely picked up. And so you, you're getting a lot of transients. Uh, I can't say a lot. You're just you're seeing more transients on this this path up and down. It seems. Um, and, and that influences how cities behave, all right? So I noticed that the library, they actually physically unplug their, their Wi-Fi when they're closed, all right? That's, that's like a measure against transients, because I noticed that on the California coast. Libraries are more inclined, libraries that had to uh, interact and, and host more transient people who are just passing through these libraries um and, and just tourist cities too like west yellowstone they'll just they'll unplug they'll turn off their wi-fi when they're closed whatever whatever just they want to reduce activity when they're around the library when it's when it's closed they don't want to offer these so people who argue that you know hey why why or ask why isn't wi-fi more available uh, just around towns, you know, for free. It's like, it, it seems to encourage, encourage too much hanging out in certain areas. But then, you know, if, what if Wi-Fi was spread out all around more, in more areas, would there be a hanging out in particular spots mo as much? Because right now it's, it's the libraries that have that problem. Um, but that doesn't explain Walmart and why they sh have shut down their their Wi-Fi. What's interesting to me, and I want to remember this point at 7.15, that the the Walmart, this Walmart had enough money to blow on all this, all this, uh, this shade cover over the entire parking lot, which I think my video picks up. And I've never seen, I'm in a Walmart right now, it has no shade at all, none. But truth or consequences found it uh, necessary to, to cover up the entire parking lot with these metal shade solar panel uh, constructions. And it's fairly new, too. I'm going to record it, and that's why I say I want to measure, mark the point that I want to show a picture at some point that this is a new construction. When you look at Google Maps... You, you see actual the start of these these uh, these overhanging roofs uh, being put up in the Walmart parking lots. So they they spent a lot of money on that. So <clears throat> why they couldn't spend any money on on uh, pr fixing their internet is is really a a poor choice of priorities with the management. They, they could put up all this shade, which is a extreme rare. This is the first case. I've been to hundreds of Walmarts. This is the first case I've seen of a Walmart putting up the, the, over the entire parking lot. It's a slightly smaller parking lot, and this Walmart, in truth or consequences, borders on being a Walmart neighborhood market. It's it's almost it's just slightly bigger than a Walmart neighborhood market, but I have seen in El Paso a Walmart neighborhood market about the same size, a large Walmart neighborhood market. But to cover the whole the whole parking lot takes a lot of money, a lot of gall, and it's it's not really that necessary. You, you got it's a, you're a discount store, you're not a luxury store. You could up and move at any time, and, and you're not going to be able to take those shade panels with you. Those are stuck there um, for a discount store. And Walmart definitely shuffles around and shuts down stores and and, and um, makes new stores elsewhere. So to, to have laid down those, those uh, shade covers, those permanent shade covers, it seems excessive. And and their their uh, their priorities are a little off, so they spent money on that, but they couldn't on the the Wi-Fi. So I complain about the Wi-Fi, 
And I can't tell whether they called the cops on me two days later uh, because uh, they didn't like me uh, giving them a hard time about the about the the lack of Wi-Fi, or if it was some some rogue employee who 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 had this inkling that I was being well, I was conducting uh, myself in a in a um, I don't want to say devious. There's a better word for that. Just say a, in a criminal manner. So that's that's a that's an interesting issue i've been told that i i should try to sue them but i mean there, i've had worse situations with cops and i'll go i gotta say that this cop who gave me a hard time uh did uh make some blunders especially with with uh the very beginning where you know i was i'm willing to show my receipt i wanted to to show it I, I don't have a problem with that i don't have a problem saying my first or last name you know, there's some people who who want to just want to sew their lips shut and not say a word. I, there's there's some information I, I don't mind uh, exchanging, and especially especially uh, to trade information. You know, I would like to have a little back and forth, and I'm willing to give up some information uh, to to gain information. It's it's not not a trouble to me. I I really don't. I don't like those situations where it's all one-sided or, you know, somebody's just being, just pouting, just sitting there pouting and not, not, uh, not, uh, and, and practicing some silent treatment. That's, that doesn't make a good video to me, but some people like that, the silent treatments videos. I like public freakouts myself. I find myself gravitating to the to those types of of uh sources of entertainment but uh you know i was right there at the storefront with the manager i was like okay let's you know i i, I knew i couldn't access their wi-fi anyway and they probably knew that too and i was like you know let, let me let's let's try to get some wi-fi signal i'll show you my receipt on my ipod and they, they have to arrest me and then waste 20 of my minutes and it's, it's very inconvenient and and a little embarrassing uh, in front of the Walmart. I've, I've never been put in handcuffs in front of a Walmart before. Uh, it just it seems strange that they felt they had to go to a video, and it took them a long time. And it made me wonder: could they have been looking, watching me from when I entered the store, all the way through to checkout? Were they watching me that whole? Were they trying to like look through the cameras to to track all my movement? Because uh, it did seem to take an unusual amount of time just to to check me to just check the video when I was checking out. They must have looked uh, when I was going through aisles, and I forget where all I walked to. Sometimes I'll walk to the bicycle department. Sometimes the outdoor equipment. Sometimes the physical fitness equipment. Sometimes cooking. Cooking. I like to see cooking. I've noticed throughout uh, many different WalMarts, there's there's just slightly different products here and there that uh, one Walmart has over another. But this is a smaller Walmart. This is like a regular in between the neighborhood market and the super center. But so this this uh the situations is frustrating and and the way truth or consequences uh the peop the culture of truth or consequences conduct themselves is partic is, is peculiar um they deal with transients they they conduct themselves they they blow money on on uh unnecessary things they the the library will cut off wi-fi for no good reason uh, I never asked them, actually. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a dumb answer anyway. It probably revolves around transients because I have seen quite a few and I've, I've seen the patterns with other cities. Um, and and that's it. And then the, then the cops, you know, I'd say mostly doing doing a, a, an honorable job, but there were moments, there were moments when the, the cops, uh, like when he was trying to force me to give him my birth date, which I was not obligated to do. And and then and then uh, uh, saying that he's going to charge me with withholding information or something like that. Uh, I kind of wish I would have reacted different to that because I kept on going back at him, and I, I kind of wish I would have acted more surprised. Like, oh, you wouldn't dare! 
you wouldn't charge me with that, would you? I would have loved to egg him on a little bit with that. I was in, I just, I get into these one track mind situation, uh, uh, just rate modes of thinking or whatever. So that's, uh, you know, there's, there's things I probably could have said or done differently, but I'm not, I'm not perfect. Um, it just takes, it takes more practice. And this was a complete surprise. I've never had a Walmart call the cops on me for shoplifting. That's, that's a surprise. And, um, but I, I've just recently had another surprise too of, uh, of a library kicking me out here, which I'm going to post a little short segment of that. A little phone call uh, the library director had to the, the librarian that I was able to hear. And actually, I slipped my, my camera right under um, and recorded it, and it's, it came up clear. So I'll put a little snippet of that up. Is this, this area has been a little surprising. It's, uh, it's strange. I mean, Idaho was extreme in the northern mountainous areas. Those guys are protected and have, to, have been able to really cultivate their extremist thoughts. But uh, New Mexico? It's, it's a surprise what's going on. It's, it's interesting. But it's an interesting study uh, to, to, uh, to be, be a part of.